Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss five classic and timelessly stylish haircuts for men. If you're into classic style, you pay a lot of attention to your wardrobe. However, the hair and the hairstyle you choose can have a great impact on the rest of your outfit. So in today's video, we discuss five classic hairstyles that will never go out of style and are therefore always appropriate for men who are into classic men's style. The first circuit is the Prohibition High and Tight. It was very popular in the mid-1920s and with shows like Boardwalk Empire, it became very popular a few years ago. Maybe you've also watched Peaky Blinders and they all have very similar hairstyles. They're very short on the side with longer hair on the back, and it gives you that rough edge that's kind of cool, but at the same time very classic. It's a style that works for anything from fine to thick hair, as long as it's reasonably straight and not too curly. Personally, I have somewhat wavy hair, and I can still pull that style off by using a very strong gel, which has got to be from Henkel, which is available at any drugstore for very little money. Even though my hair has a mind of its own, this product allows me to get a fairly straight look and it easily comes out just by washing it with water and regular shampoo. The tricky part about this haircut is that when it grows out, sometimes it can look quite bad, so you have to pay attention to go to your barber on a regular basis. I'm scheduled for a new haircut tomorrow. Apart from a strong gel, of course, you can also use wax, you can use a pomade or fiber. It really all depends on the hair what works for you. I've tried many things and pomade for me created a pomade acne, which meant I had lots of zits all over my forehead and the sheets on the pillowcases were always dirty and it was a huge pain. In terms of length, I suggest you have at least two inches on top and if you're at the barber, tell them to go with number one to start and you can see how you like it and how it blends in. Of course, you can also have longer hair all the way up to five or six inches, but then it gets a little borderline. The next classic cut is the pompadour, or sometimes also known as James Dean. You definitely need longer hair for that, and it's all about the top and how you comb it. Now James Dean had a curl, and for that you need some curl in your hair, otherwise you can also go without, and it still looks quite timeless and classic. If you're new to this hairstyle, I suggest you go to a barber because it all starts with a hair dryer. Yes, if you don't have one of those, you can safely invest in them. It's not just something for women. For the pompadour, you also need good hair products, and I suggest you take a look at our in-depth list on quality hair products here. For most men, a medium hold pomade or grooming cream is the best way to achieve that look that looks typically like the cool James Dean. The third classic style is the flare. And no, I'm not talking about the 1980s Gordon Gecko look that just looks dated today and almost like the cliche used car salesman. Of course, if you have longer hair on top, you can comb it back and have a little flare and not get quite an extreme Gordon Gecko look. If you want to wear the updated version of it, you want a square cut and we tell your barber, he'll know what you mean. For this hairstyle, a mousse works best, and you just work it in your hair and then comb it back. I suggest not to comb it back quite straight. You want a little wave so it looks more pleasing. The fourth haircut is the undercut, or we call it the Gent Gazette. It's kind of the haircut I typically wear. I part it on one side, and initially I started parting it further in the middle, now I moved all the way out. Usually my sides are cut shorter all the way up, so I get that nice transition. At the same time, it grows out in a way that doesn't look terrible. Usually I go get a haircut about every three to four weeks. If you wanna see how I get that hairstyle step by step and what my hair looks like without product, please check out this video here. Personally, I use that very strong gel got to be from Henkel. Traditionally, you would do it with pomade, but unfortunately, I just had many bad experiences with it. To learn more about pomade, please check out our in-depth pomade guide here. The fifth hairstyle is called the bedhead. It's similar to a pompadour. It's shorter to the side, higher on top, but it's just a little more disheveled, which can look more relaxed, and it's particularly popular with hipsters, often combined with a beard. So you wanna tell your barber to keep it high on the sides 
and instead of combing it back, you're pulling it forward and you dishevel it slightly with your hands. This is definitely a cut you don't want slicked back, otherwise it looks greasy. In terms of products, you wanna stick with something with a matte finish and it can be like a grooming cream or a foaming cream, not a pomade, they're just too stiff. I suggest you start with damp hair and then use a blow dryer and your fingers to kind of dry it in shape. And the only problem is strong winds. To counteract that, you can work with a bit of hairspray. So in general, here are a few quick tips. If you keep your sides shorter, you can keep the top shorter too, which is easier to maintain, yet it will look longer than if the sides grow out. In my case, my ears will also look bigger and my wife always teases me about it. I find a nice part to be quite pleasing and you can really achieve it easily by combing it forward first and then backwards to get that proper line. I find that correcting the part is more difficult than starting all over. And if you're having a lot of issues, you can also shave the part with a razor. It's not something I personally resort to, but I definitely know people who swear by it. So give it a try if you have issues getting that nice part you desire. Three, buy a quality product that works for your hair. Now, personally, I'd like to get a more high quality product that costs a little more, but honestly, I've tried so many things and the got to be is the only thing that works so far for me. If you have a better alternative, please make some suggestions in the comments. Otherwise, please check out this guide. We recommend a bunch of hair products that we've all tested. Four, don't wash your hair daily. By doing so, you're removing healthy and important oils and you're just drying out your hair. If you wash your hair every second or third day, you should be just fine. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but your hair is likely to look healthier and it's easy to work with the second day after you've washed it than right after you've washed it. If you work out or exercise a lot and you feel compelled to wash your hair, I suggest to use conditioner instead and not always shampoo. It will be better for your hair and not as harsh. Also, it gets rid of all of the grime and grit of your hair without stripping it of all the essential oils. Five, it's okay to have multiple products and you're not a diva if you have that. Sometimes you want different hairstyles that require different products. Just test a few things and figure out what works and doesn't work for you. Every hair is the same. Maybe you have colics and no hair is like the other. Six, invest in a quality comb. I know the 50 cent or dollar store combs are very tempting. They're made of plastic, they're cheap. They seem to be exactly the same ones as more expensive combs. Yet, a quality comb will cost you about 20 bucks. It's usually made out of hard rubber and it's much better for your scalp. It's much more comfortable and you can also comb in a more precise way. Personally, I've tried horn combs, but I find the teeth to be too stiff and too brittle, so over time they'll just break. If you're more interested in combs, stay tuned for our comb guide coming soon. Last but not least, it really pays to have a good relationship with your barber or people who really understand what you want, but at the same time can make recommendations based on their experience that work for your hair type and face shape. Also, if you live in the US, make sure to tip your barber well. Five to $10 are perfectly acceptable. They'll be happy and they'll remember you, they'll fit you in when it's tight and you need a haircut quickly, and they will go the extra mile to get you that haircut that you want and looks great on you. If you wanna see how I style my hair, please check out this video here. Today, I'm wearing a quite casual combination and usually I'm much more dressed up. If you wanna see what I usually wear, hit that subscribe button and new videos with outfit recommendations come right to your inbox. I opted for a very casual summery outfit consisting of a polo shirt, however, I skipped the usually very flimsy collar that you see on polo shirts and exchanged it for a shirt style collar with an interlining. It's much cleaner, it's much neater, yet you still have the breathable, flexible polo shirt knit. Rather than with a solid color, I went with a mottled yarn with blue tones and white tones. So it's very fresh, but you won't see stains as easily and it's a little different and not so boring. For my shorts, I opted for navy with white polka dots made out of linen. It's a very wonderful material for the warmer days because it wrinkles in a very sophisticated way and it's different than all the cotton shorts out there. For my shoes, I opted the white of the polka dots and went with a canvas shoe that I wear barefoot. It's very breathable, I don't sweat, and it's fine for summer in a casual outfit like this. <laughs> Thank you.